NASA is working to design the airliner of the future, faster, with less noise, and less impact on the environment. Get ready for takeoff, next on Real World. Not all of NASA's best designs are intended for space. Many of the most important developments in its history have to do with aircraft that travel within Earth's atmosphere. NASA has always been one of the foremost authorities in developing aircraft. You know, like airplanes and helicopters. In fact, the world as we know it, the ability to fly from one place to another to ship our packages overnight, would not exist without all the work that NASA has done. And that work continues today. One project has NASA working on ways to make supersonic airplanes, planes that fly faster than the speed of sound, safe, quiet, and common for everyday air travel. We don't build airplanes, but we're trying to put the technology and the tools in place where someone, if, if the market was right, uh, could design and, and construct a supersonic aircraft that would be effective from an economic standpoint. Peter Cohen is the Supersonics Project Principal Investigator for NASA's Fundamental Aeronautics Program. So we really are going after some of these key challenges, such as the sonic boom. We'd like to get to the point where we would lower the boom so that the airplane could fly over land without creating a loud or, or annoying disturbance on, on the ground that people would hear. That was the problem with the Concorde, the last commercial airliner that flew at supersonic speeds. It was fast, but created a loud sonic boom. The Concorde flew more than twice the speed of sound, topping out at Mach 2.2. That's 2,330 kilometers per hour. By comparison, the Boeing 747 tops out at Mach 0.92, or 988 kilometers per hour. The Airbus A380 reaches top speeds of Mach 0.96, or 1,020 kilometers per hour. But the noise and the cost made the Concorde and supersonic commercial flight less than practical. Now, here's the really cool part. NASA is looking way outside the box, trying to pull as many ideas as possible together to make this project a reality. They're even looking for school kids like you. My design has the, the key thing to minimize the sonic boom is to have this um, extended nose, which will um, reshape the sound wave generated by an aircraft that travels speeds exceeding the um, speed of sound. This is Edric San Miguel. He's a high school student and the winner of the NASA Fundamental Aeronautics Student Competition for 2008-2009 High School Division. Another thing in my design is the materials will be lightweight and um, fuel efficient, unlike the um, Concorde. The Concorde um, it demonstrated a lot of um, difficulties with um, fuel efficiency. In addition to the extended nose, what I found in my research is that an inverted V-tail shape also helps reshape this um, sound wave. So instead of having that sharp sound wave that is, that is generated by um, aircraft, it's going to be more like a smooth curve. So um, that will minimize the sonic boom. As a result of his innovative ideas, he's spending the summer at NASA, learning what it takes to be an aeronautics engineer for the agency. The experience here at NASA is pretty phenomenal. You get a lot of hands-on things that you can work on, and it gives you a, it gives you an idea of what your future might be like if you continue the path that you're um, headed to. Our goal is just to inspire young people to think and get out there and uh, and do a little research and try and understand a problem, and then think about how would you create a solution to that problem. So that was kind of the exciting thing about the high school competition and particularly Edric's submission is that it was obvious that he did his homework and, and read, read a lot about, about the problem and then took a whole bunch of ideas and put them together uh, into a solution that, you know, that has, you know that, that has potential. The fact that he thought about it, synthesized a unique concept, and then wrote about it in a very clear, expressive manner resulted in him being a, a winner. And Edric's work is just one of many NASA programs that student interns get to work on. Elsewhere at Langley, students are working in the transonic dynamic wind tunnel, trying to minimize flutter in aircraft. Other students are using computer models to determine the environmental impact of scramjets. 
super fast planes that will fly perhaps as fast as 24 times the speed of sound. If Edric continues in engineering, he could one day help to develop a better way to make supersonic flight a reality. And that could cut flight time in half or more. But the sonic boom created by planes flying faster than the speed of sound needs to be reduced or eliminated. When an airplane's flying faster than sound, it out, it's outracing its own noise, its own pressure disturbance. So what happens is after the airplane has, has passed overhead, the entire pressure disturbance created by the airplane arrives at the ground instantaneously as two very loud bangs. It's the instantaneousness of that sound that creates the real disturbance. It's an audio disturbance primarily. Uh, but you can actually feel the pressure change on your body. But now, researchers are looking to the future to planes that will perform better than supersonic planes of the past. Near the airplane, there are lots of these pressure changes due to the nose of the airplane, the wings, the cockpit, canopy, the, the engine, the cells. As that boom travels from the airplane, it travels out like a sound wave, like ripples in a pond, and begins to head towards the ground, all those little waves begin to merge together into two large waves. So that's why the sonic boom is a large bang bang on the ground. To control the sonic boom, you have to keep all those little disturbances from merging together. So you design the fuselage and the wings of the airplane such that those, those shock waves are small and they're kind of evenly spaced uh, down, down the, the length of the airplane. The state of the technology at the current time favors a smaller aircraft, smaller than the Concorde, which could reintroduce supersonic flight as a viable means of transportation. NASA's vision is, is further out, uh, say 20 years from now, where we could have an, a small supersonic airliner, which could be used on long-range routes relatively efficiently and uh, without environmental impact. And with students like Edric and you, thinking about this technology, the innovation will keep on coming. You can learn more about supersonic flight and all NASA aeronautics technology by surfing over to www.nasa.gov topics aeronautics. <laughs>